Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Transformation Community Church, where our vision is to transform the lives of people through the word of God Amen. and the love of Christ everywhere. My name is Jason Flowers and I am the pastor here at Transformation Community Church. I want to thank you for choosing us here at Transformation Community Church to worship with on today. Amen. Amen. But before I get into the word, I want to extend a warm happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. That includes women who have a biological child or a woman who has opened her heart to a child to establish a motherly relationship. Amen. Amen. And I would also be remiss if I didn't wish my mother, Celia Flowers, Amen. a happy Mother's Day. Yes. She has gone on to be with glory mm -hmm. and is with this sermon I dedicate to her. Amen. 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 So before we get into the sermon, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Dear Father, we just thank you for things being as well as they are. Dear Father, we just thank you for allowing us to see another day, to put our feet on solid ground. Dear Father, to wake up this morning yeah. to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. We owe it all to you, dear Father. We just thank you for your presence mm -hmm. in our lives. We thank you for what you've done for us yesterday, what you're doing for us today, mm -hmm. and the promises you have for us tomorrow. Dear Father, we just thank you for being a deliverer, mm -hmm. a way maker. Dear Father, we just thank you for your anointing spirit on each and every one of us mm -hmm. in each and every one of our homes, dear Father. We just thank you, dear Father, for being you all by yourself. And Father, in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, we just ask that you just go before us today. You be a cloud by day and a fire by night. Just going before us today in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, we just ask that this word that comes forth be edifying to your people, dear Father. We thank you. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, dear Father, we just pray, dear Father, that you hide me behind the cross and that the people will hear a word from you and nothing from me. Dear Father, we just ask, dear Father, that all that we do will be pleasing unto your sight, that we will humbly submit ourselves to you in truth and in deed and in word, dear Father. We lift your name on high, dear Father. We just pray that you just continue to make the devil our footstool, have a hedge of protection around us each and every day. And it is in this prayer, I give you all the praise, glory, and honor, for you are worthy to be praised. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Well, it's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. Amen. So our sermon and our scripture for today is coming out of 2 Kings 4, 8 through 37. So get your Bibles, 2 Kings 4, 8 through 37. Now, I won't read that scripture in its entirety. We're going to work through that scripture as we go through the sermon. However, I would ask you to read that in its entirety in your study time, in your, in your meditation time, that you read 2 Kings 4, through, 2 Kings 4 8 through 37. Amen? Amen. Amen. This account of the Shulamite son is one which teaches us about faith, it shows us something about what faith is and how faith works. Mm -hmm. The passage tells us very little about this woman and her background and how she became a believer or where she came from. In fact, it does not even directly speak of her faith, but the events in the passage demonstrate, and, and after all, it demonstrates her faith and it, after all, it's more important to demonstrate our faith than to talk about our faith. Amen? Amen. The Bible says in James 2 that faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So as I did some research for the sermon, I found that the Shunammite was a prominent woman, literally meaning a great woman. Mm -hmm. This word great was used of wealth, influence, and character. This woman was prominent in her community, not only because she and her husband were well-to-do, but because of her spiritual character as well. Mm -hmm. We will see she was a great woman for a number of reasons. All of these were attitudes and actions that demonstrated her faith. But you know what? 
Our faith needs to grow. Yep. God wants us to grow in our trust and relationship with him. Mm -hmm. He wants to teach us how to turn our lives over to him. All of our fears, hopes, dreams, or problems, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But we are often happy and comfortable with, you know, status quo, mm -hmm. with our religious routines and the comfort of our lives. The Lord, however, wants us to stretch our faith, mm -hmm. and he often tests us in some areas where we not only need it, but where we are most sensitive and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. A physical weakness may be one, a personality trait, our job, our pocketbook, and in this case, since it's Mother's Day, it's our child or children. Amen? Amen. God knows us and works accordingly. Yeah. And so it was with the Shunammite woman. Mm -hmm. She had a special need in her life. And this need was an area of great vulnerability for her. In the Old Testament times, being without the child was a great burden for a couple. Mm -hmm. But especially for women. You know, you got to understand that children are a blessing from God. Amen. They are a result of the direct blessing of God, for it is God who loves us. And it's also God who opens and closes wombs. Mm -hmm. So this this lady, this woman, she takes her responsibility very seriously and with great caution. Mm -hmm. She takes us on an incredible journey of faith with her child and shows us great motherhood. I believe she was a great mother, not just from a human standpoint of view, but from a spiritual one as well. Mm -hmm. So let's notice, let's, uh, let's take tea, let's take heed and notice those with me. So the title of this sermon is, It Is Well. <laughs> Again, yes. the title of this sermon is, It Is Well. How many of you all know that it is well it is in well. your soul? <laughs> Amen. Right. Amen. So here's my question. You ready? Yep. Let's go. So we find that this lady, this woman was great with hospitality and sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So in order to be a great mother, you have to have great hospitality and great sensitivity. So we read in, in 2 Kings 4, 8 through 10, and it goes, One day Elijah went to the town of Shunem. A wealthy woman lived there, and she urged him to come to her home for a meal. After that, whenever he passed that way, he was stopped there for something to eat. She said to her husband, I am sure this man who stops in from time to time is a holy man of God. Amen, a holy man of God. Amen. Let's build a small room for him on the roof and furnish it with a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. Mm -hmm. Then he will have a place to stay whenever he comes by. So back in those days, there were no Marriott's, there were no JW's, there were no Holiday Inn's, or any of the like, those who travel were dependent upon the gracious hospitality of the people of the land, especially the prophets in their traveling ministries as they moved about from place to place. Mm -hmm. So in the New Testament, mm -hmm. so we're going to take that to the New Testament, gracious hospitality is one of the signs of maturity and a general responsibility for all believers, especially to those who follow the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we need to be gracious in our hospitality to all believers. So this mother was hospitable and sensitive. Mm -hmm. She willingly opened her home to the needs she saw. Because this was a regular occurrence whenever Elijah passed by, she wanted to go a step further. She wanted to go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. She asked her husband to build a room to make life more comfortable for the prophet. Now, can you imagine that? Your wife coming to you, uh, husbands and saying, or you even going to your husband and saying, hey, husband, can you please build a room, a room for another man that's going to come by from time to time? We just want him to be comfortable. Right. So that is that shows incredible faith. That shows incredible care. That shows incredible sensitivity. Amen. Incredible hospitality. Mm -hmm. So she probably recognized this need for, for Elijah because he needed rest in a quiet place. Uh, and apparently, you know, this family had the resources to do it. Mm -hmm. So this mother practiced true hospitality as opposed to mere entertaining. And here's the difference between the two. Here's the difference between true hospitality and entertaining. Mm -hmm. 
In entertaining, so catch this, in entertaining, the focus is upon the host in their home, the furnishings, the decor, etc., which are all designed to impress the guests. In hospitality, the focus is on the comfort, pleasure, and refreshment of the guests. Mm -hmm. The design is to bless the guests. You see the difference? Yep. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So her sensitivity really flows out of hospitality. She was not simply satisfied with a place for Elijah to sleep, but knew he needed a private place, a place to pray, a place to meditate, a place to study, refresh himself and to be alone with God. She was concerned for the details of his need. That is hard to be aware of if you're only focused on your needs and your wants. Amen? Amen. So tell your neighbor, it's never about you. It's always about God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The next thing uh, the woman shows is great faith. So we need to have great faith. So as we get to 2 Kings 4, 18 through 24, it reads, And the child grew. Now it happened one day that when he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, My head, my head. So he said to a servant, Carry him to his mother. Notice he said, Take him to his mother. The father said, I don't want nothing to do with this. Take him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat up on her knees till noon. Then he died. Mm -hmm. And she, she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. She shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. Mm -hmm. So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon or the Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. Yeah. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you to. Mm -hmm. So let's check this out. Let's check this out. This mother's immediate response is to lay the boy on Elijah's bed. I can't help but wonder why she would do this. Perhaps it's because she wanted to get him as close as possible to the man of God mm -hmm. or in his, or his belongings in this case. Or perhaps it was in preparation for when the man of God returned at her request. Mm -hmm. Or regardless of what it was, I mean, she was in a hurry. She was in a hurry to get there and she was immediately looking for help from God, mm -hmm. not from herself and not from anyone else. You notice, she didn't call her friend. Right. She didn't call her mother. Right. She didn't call her father. Mm -hmm. She didn't call her brothers or sisters. She called on God. Yeah. She said, I'm going to God with this matter. So start and think, stop and think about it. The things that are going on in your life, mm -hmm. when there's a crisis, when there's something of nature that needs immediate attention, who do you call on mm -hmm. first? Are you picking up the phone and calling your mother, right. your father, your best friend, who are you calling? Mm -hmm. Are you calling on God? Mm -hmm. So then she saddles a donkey and takes a servant so that they may run mm -hmm. to Elijah. She didn't walk. They run to Elijah. Mm -hmm. So I imagine while she frantically packs her things, her husband stand, is standing silently in the corner and watching. And finally he asks, why she's going now, it's not a day of worship. So either the husband doesn't understand what she has in mind, he doesn't get the sense of urgency, or he doesn't believe in the resurrection that can happen. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. He doesn't believe in the resurrection that can happen with their son. So obviously there's a crisis. She drops everything, runs to the man of God. In essence, she's running to God. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine how she feels or what she is experiencing, but I can learn from her response. She runs to God. And that's what I want each and every one of you all to do today is when you have a crisis, when you have a situation, I want you to run to God. I don't want you to walk to God. I don't want you to skip to God. I don't want you to trot to God. I want you to turn to God and run and seek his face immediately. Amen. So how many of you know when you have a crisis, 
when you have a crisis, you need to sprint to God. But what you have to do is you have to do something. You can't sit back and wait on something to happen. It's not going to fall on your lap. It's not going to take care of itself. You have to do something. This mother took action. She had to do something. So again, I remind you, mm -hmm. faith without action yeah. is dead. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. But here's, the, here's our problem. Not, not everyone does that. Not, not everyone does that. Some people blame God and run away. Mm -hmm. They turn their anger at God mm -hmm. and they stay mad at God and reject the comfort and peace God wants to bring. Jesus. I've seen it and I bet you have also. Mm -hmm. But there is a better way. And that best way is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Help me somebody. Mm -hmm. So our immediate response to every crisis, not some crisis, not you know a couple of crises, but Every crisis should be to draw near in faith to God. Mm -hmm. He loves you. He cares for you. Mm -hmm. He died from the cross for you. Amen. Amen. So we needn't waste time complaining or plotting. Our first response is to seek him. Yeah. So here's why. So it says our hope and faith is not for the present only, but it's for largely based on the future. The boy is in her arms, the boy that's in her arms is dead, her son is dead. But see, look to what might be after God worked. You just missed your chance to shout. Here's why our hope and faith is not for the present, is not for the now, but it's largely based on the future. The future is Jesus. The boy in her arms was dead. Yeah. There wasn't anything she could do. Mm -hmm. So what's dead? We can say dead could be a number of things. Right. As it pertains to your life right now, mm -hmm. it could be something is dead financially, mm -hmm. something you got a dead situation just looming, lurking around in your in your situ in your home in your life. You can have dead relationships. Mm -hmm. You can have a dead marriage. Mm -hmm. You can have dead hopes and dreams. Mm -hmm. How many of you all know you can have dead hopes and dreams? Despair, right? Or you could be dead spiritually. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it was dead, yeah. and it needed life. Mm -hmm. But she looked to what might be after God worked. After God worked. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many of y'all know God can do everything but fail? Amen. The Lord is with us. Amen. He's always with us. He will never leave nor forsake you. God can do everything but fail. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So her only response to him is, it shall be well. <laughs> Meaning there was no worries. She didn't cry. Mm -hmm. There was no grieving. Amen. And more importantly, she had no fear. Yeah. She was saying, God got this. <laughs> Help me somebody. Mm -hmm. So her son had just died in her arms mm -hmm. and her only plan was to get to the prophet. Yeah. So how will the prophet make things well? Mm -hmm. As soon as Elijah sees her, he knows something is wrong because she had to travel. So from where she was to where Elijah was, was 20 miles. Mm -hmm. So she got on her horse and she was out of there. Mm -hmm. She had to go 20 miles to get to Elijah. So he knew something was wrong. Amen. Amen. And so he sent a servant out to see, to find out, to see what was going on. So the servant asked the question, if all is, is if, the servant asked the question, if all is well with her, mm -hmm. her husband and her child. This time she answers, now check this out. She answers, it is well. Yep. Instead of it shall be well. Mm -hmm. She said, it is well. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean, Pastor Flowers? Well, I'm glad you asked. I believe that now being with the prophet, when this woman combined her faith with her hope for the future, that she was able to rest easy, mm -hmm. knowing that somehow everything would eventually be well, yeah. again, let me repeat that. The reason why she just found comfort and she found security and she found peace is that I believe that now she's with the prophet. Yeah. She's with the man of God. You have to be with God. You have to be with God. Yeah. This woman combined her faith with her hope in the future. The future is Jesus. Mm -hmm. That she was able to rest easy knowing that somehow everything would be well. Amen. So in other words, she grew in her faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. She didn't rely on anything else other than her faith in Jesus. How many of you know when you have children, mothers, 
you got you got to turn them back over to God. Yeah. These aren't these are only our children for a moment in time, for a period of time. The Lord blessed us with these children. Mm -hmm. These children, at some point in time, you have to return them back to God. They are God's children. There's only so much we can do for them in this lifetime. Yeah. We love them. We care for them. We nurture them. We do everything that the Lord asked us to do. But at some point in time, we have to return them back to God mm -hmm. because God's way is better than our way. Mm -hmm. God's ways are so much greater. He knows so much more. And there's a point in time that we can't tell our children what to do. Mm -hmm. But we have to put in them a spiritual formation so that when things go awry, that they will find Jesus. Yeah. The Lord is in them mm -hmm. and they return back to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this whole thing, I might liken it to a mending patient in a hospital. Mm -hmm. So the body is still not healed, but all is well because healing is on the way. Mm. Amen. 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 So now, you know, today, things are so much different. Now, you don't have to go to any person on earth. You don't have to go to anyone on earth to get to God. That's right. Jesus died and he paid the price on Calvary so that we have a direct yeah. connection to God. Yeah. So, but let's adopt the same mindset as his mother. Mm -hmm. If there is to be an answer, a solution to my situation, I must go to God. I must take it to God and lay it at his feet, which ex is exactly what we see her doing. Mm -hmm. Help me somebody. Mm -hmm. So brothers and sisters, faith gives victory. Mm -hmm. Nothing stops this mother. She gets and she gets on it. She's going. She's, she takes action. She travels at the speed of life. She gets there. She had faith in God and persistence to keep going until she made contact with the man of God not only for her sake, but for the sake of her son. Amen? Amen. 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 And then here's the other thing we find. The woman, the mother, has a grateful heart. Mm -hmm. She has a grateful heart. How do you know? Let's read it in 2 Kings 4, 32 through 36. Mm -hmm. When Elijah arrived, the child was indeed dead, lying there on the prophet's bed. He went in alone and shut the door behind him and prayed to the Lord. Then he laid down on the child's body, placing his mouth on the child's mouth, his eyes on the child's eyes, and his hands on the child's hands. Mm -hmm. As he stretched out on him, the child's body began to grow warm. Elijah got up, walked back and forth across the room once, and then stretched himself out on the child again. Mm -hmm. This time, the boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Glory to God. Jesus. Then Elijah summoned Gehazi, call the child's mother, he said. And when she came, Elijah said, here, take your son. She fell. Check this out. She fell at his feet and bowed before him. Mm -hmm. Overwhelmed with gratitude. Yes. Again, she fell at his feet and bowed before him. Overwhelmed. With gratitude. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come on now. Then she took her son in her arms and carried him down the stairs. So once, here, check this out. I want you to follow me on this. So check this out. Once Elijah reaches the house, the first thing he does is shut the door because it's a private matter, right. not a public matter. Mm -hmm. So some of us, we got to quit telling everybody our business. Come on. It's a private matter, yeah. not a public matter. Right. When things are going on with you or it's going on inside you, I'm not saying you can't tell anyone, but you need to tell God first, but you can't tell everybody your business. It's not everybody's business. Mm -hmm. So some of us, we need to learn how to keep our mouth shut. <laughs> Amen? Amen. 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 And then he prays to the Lord. How many of y'all know that prayer changes things? Yes. If you don't have a prayer life, you are stuck. You are in mire. You're in the yeah. mud. You have to have a prayer life in order to get through life here on earth. Amen. Because there's things that are going to come your way. The ebbs and flow of life are going to come. We don't know what's coming. It says that the Lord watches out for us for things that are seen and unseen. Mm -hmm. We just don't know. Right. But when they do come, yeah. we need to have a prayer life because prayer changes things. Yes. Prayer will see you through. Mm -hmm. Prayer is that direct connection that you have with the Lord where you could just pour out your heart to the Lord mm -hmm. and let him know what's going on in your life. He already knows what he wants to hear from you through prayer. Yes. Amen? Amen? So prayer changes things. Right. 
Then he lies on top of the child until his flesh begins to warm. So he makes a physical contact with the child. A physical contact with the child. So what does this mean? This means that, hey, when you are, after you have fasted and prayed, after you have took it to the Lord and took it to the Lord in prayer, he says, hey, you got to go make contact with people. Mm -hmm. If you want to have relationships with people, you got to make contact with them. So he, you know, you got to go hold someone's hand. Mm -hmm. You got to embrace them with a hug. Mm -hmm. You have to show them the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. You have to give them, it says, his body became warm. Mm -hmm. Once he made contact, I'm telling you, when you are in dead situations or facing some crises, you got to go put your arms around people, mm -hmm. make them feel loved, mm -hmm. make them feel wanted, warm their bodies. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. That comes a warming heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 So finally, Elijah paces back, mm -hmm. back and forth one time. So what is Elijah doing? He's meditating. He's meditating. So we find now that Elijah is praying. Mm -hmm. He's giving hugs. He's holding hands. When you pray, when you pray with someone that you love and care for that's going through something, I beg you to go hold their hand. Mm -hmm. Hold their hand. Give them a hug and pray with them. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then he meditates. Meditation is key. And then guess what he does? Mm -hmm. He goes back after meditation and hearing from the Lord. He goes back and he he he. He holds the child again. He stretches out on the child again. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough to do it one time. We have to do it multiple times. But the Lord is showing us that it's not enough to pray for someone once. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to extend your heart to someone once. It's not enough to extend your grace and mercy to your children once. Mm -hmm. You have to do it time and time again. Mm -hmm. And then what, this, this, is, this is what's amazing. After the second time, the boy sneezes seven times. How many of you all know that seven is completion? Yep. Seven is the number completion. It means completion in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So he said it's complete. It's done. Mm -hmm. Seven times and the boy Glory. opens his eyes. Glory yeah. to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. How many of you all know the Lord will do it for you? Yes, the Lord will. will do it for you. Thank He'll you. make a way out of no way. Thank you Lord. just got to trust and believe in him and have faith in what he can do. Mm -hmm. Have faith in his benefits. Amen. Yes, yes. So, so through fervent prayer and meditation, mm -hmm. help me, somebody. Help me. God answers Elijah's prayer, <laughs> and the boy comes back to life Jesus. to be restored to his mother. That's what we have to do if we want to be restored. If we want restoration, if we want peace, if we want serenity, if we want all of these things, then we gotta pray and meditate, and the Lord will restore you. You, he Lord. will restore your household. If you got chaos in your household right now, mm -hmm. if you got chaos with your children right now, if you got issues with your children right now, then let me let me tell you that the Lord will restore you. But at first, it's going to come through prayer and meditation. Mm -hmm. So this should reassure you that anything is possible with God. Amen. We might not understand the means by which God operates, but we are always to have a grateful heart. Mm -hmm. So mothers, spend your time praising God rather than complaining or doubting God. Mm -hmm. So it reads in Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Mm -hmm. always, be, always be full of joy in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I say it again, rejoice. Yep. Let everyone that see you are considerate in all you do. Let everyone that see you are considerate in all you do, he's saying, hey, let everyone that sees you see that you are hosp hospitable, that you have great hospitality, and that you have great sensitivity. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Don't fear. Don't fret. Mm -hmm. Have faith. Mm -hmm. Have strong faith. As a matter of fact, let's grow in your faith. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Yeah. Tell God what you need. Don't tell your mama. Don't tell your daddy. Don't tell your girlfriend. Don't tell your, Don't even tell your husband. As you, you see the lady, she didn't even tell her husband what, was, what she was going. She right. just went and did it. She right. went to God. So it says, tell God what you need and thank him mm -hmm. for all he has done. Yep. Then here's your promise. Here's your promise right here. Mm -hmm. You do those things. If you do what I just outlined in verses four mm -hmm. through six, here's your promise. Mm -hmm. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. His peace will guard your heart yep. and your mind yep. as you live in Christ Jesus. Yep. Help me somebody. Help me. So I'm going to close like this. Do you know what is truly praiseworthy about this mother? Mm -hmm. She was a woman who was committed mm -hmm. to the Lord no matter what her situation. Mm -hmm. We see her serving him before there was a miracle, yeah. before her son was born. Yeah. She was hospitable. Mm -hmm. She was sensitive mm -hmm. to the man of God mm -hmm. and bowing before him after the miracle. Jesus. Her situation did not cause her to waver in her relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's the way to live. Committing my life to him, resting in his plan for me, and living before him in reverence. Mm. Come on, everyone. Come join with me in doing just that. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is on your side. The Lord is with you. Did yeah. the Lord bless you on today? Amen. Did the Lord bless you on today? Amen. Did you find a word that can help you today? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Glory to God. Amen. All praises be to God. Yes. All praises be to God. Yes, thank you, Lord, for your grace and thank you for your mercy. Amen. Thank you for your saving, mm. your saving grace and mm. mercy. Thank you, Hallelujah. 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 At this time, Hallelujah. I would like to open the doors to the church. Thank you, Lord. My wife, and happy Mother's Day to my wife, Renee, <laughs> and I are here to receive you. We here at Transformation Community Church are here to receive you with open arms yes. in the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. If you need prayer, please call us at 480-524-7080. Or you can always send us an email to Transformation Community Church 1, that's the number 1, mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. We would love to pray for you. Mm -hmm. If you want to be saved, please call us at 480 524-7080 or you can send us an email at transformationcommunitychurch1 at gmail.com It will be our honor to lead you down the road to Romans a road that leads to Christ If you would like to join our church and thank you for those who have joined our church over the last two to three weeks Glory to God for the growth Glory to God for the growth We would love to have you Please call us at 480 524-7080 or just send us an email to transformationcommunitychurch1 at gmail.com We will love to connect with you. And lastly, and lastly, mm -hmm. if you would like to support our ministry financially, please send via Cash App to dollar sign transformation A Z and please put Transformation Community Church in the, in the note or you can send to us via Venmo and that's at Transformation AZ. And again, please remember to put Transformation Community Church in the notes. So until next time, brothers and sisters in Christ, mm -hmm. may the Lord bless and keep you. Yes. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. Mm -hmm. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Just know that I love you and God loves you so much more. In the precious name of Jesus, have a most favored week. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God.